What's up guys, my name is Andy. In this video, I'm gonna finish rebuilding the heater box that I took out of my 66 Mustang. You might recall in a previous video, I had taken this out of the car and gone through the various steps of what it takes to remove this from the car, everything you gotta take out, the, the fasteners you need to undo, and, and all the pieces that are connected to it to get this out of the car so you can take a look at what it's gonna to take to rebuild it. On mine, I suspect that the heater core uh, had gone bad and that's why they cut the hoses off and they just put a heater bypass pass hose on the motor just to skip this whole thing all together. Now I want to take this apart and see what's wrong with it and see the parts that we're going to need to buy or source to get this thing rebuilt. So let's go ahead and take apart this heater box and we'll see what we're going to have to replace. So right off the bat, I do know that I'm going to have to replace this plenum. This is that old pressed paper cardboard style and not only is it torn up, it's all deformed and th this is not something that I want to salvage. If I maybe I was doing one of those numbers matching perfect cars or something, maybe I would look into that. But really, I just buy the plastic version and throw that in the car. So now from here, let's go ahead and start to take apart the box. The first thing you're going to want to do is take these clips off the top and the bottom and the sides and then I'll separate the box into two halves. And the last thing that we'll do is we'll take off this this ring here. Let's set that to the side. Now we can start separating these two halves. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looks like I was carrying around half of nature. Uh, that's normal though. And to get this heater core out, we're gonna wanna, I'm gonna have to cut these hoses off so I can pull the, this core out. Now we can start to see inside here. Squirrel cage is spinning, that's good. But as you can see, gosh, this just disintegrates in my hand. It's like this is the old foam that was in there. And look at this, it just, it just turns into dust. <laughs> it looks like I think I can go ahead and salvage this box. It's pretty dirty. Um, I think what I can do is I can get all of these, you know, these parts out. We can take apart. Get these two screws out of here and let's get this half off. There and take, yeah, see? Oh man, it's, it is pretty rusty, but I think it's salvageable. And this is one of those things that you guys can kind of decide what you want to do on your setup because you know, it's 250 bucks just for a box. Uh, you know, and then these internal pieces, you're gonna have to buy the motor still in the squirrel cage, you're gonna have to buy the core, you're gonna have to buy um, the gaskets. I mean, there's quite a bit that you still have to buy. And I think for this car, I think I can, I think I'm just gonna clean this, this old gasket stuff out of here, just kind of chip away at it and clean it off. And then, um, and I think I can salvage it. I think, I think we'll be all right. Let's, let's test this motor real quick. So I've got a battery here in the garage and I'm just gonna hook some alligator clips up to the leads of the motor here and just give it 12 volts and just see if I can get this thing to turn over. And that sounds pretty good. There's a little bit of a rattle in there, but I think for the most part, it sounds pretty good, which is great. I don't need to buy a new motor, so it's gonna save me a couple bucks. So I went ahead and cleaned this thing out. You know, this, this trim piece here is pretty rusty, and you know, I might be able to buy just that one. I don't know, getting this gasket off here might ruin that, that metal piece. But for the most part, I think I can salvage this thing. This little heater uh, switch here, this thing looks pretty good. You know, I think other than just getting a new gasket set, I think we'll be all right. And on this heater core, you know, there's no real, I mean, I guess you could pressure test it, but it's not worth it. These things are cheap enough that I, I'm just gonna go ahead and get a new one in here. Again, I suspect the reason why they cut those hoses is because this thing had failed in the past. So uh, let's just get a new one and put it in there. 
So what do we have to do here? We're gonna get ourselves a new heater core. We're gonna get ourselves a, a gasket kit that goes on here and seals this whole box up. And then um, I don't, I need the, I need the new heater plenum. So I'll get one of those. And then I never had the, the tubes that go from here up into the dash for the defrost. So I can order that as well. And uh, I think I can get everything as a kit. So let's go ahead and get that ordered. While I was waiting for those parts to get shipped, I went ahead and took all of the sheet metal parts inside the heater box and took a wire wheel to them and cleaned them up the best I could. Although some of these are pretty, pretty rusted. I mean, this is pretty thin right here. It doesn't take much for that to break, but you know, my options are either buy a whole new box or just salvage what I have. And the irony is, is that I don't really use the heater in my car because I don't drive it in bad weather. So I'm probably never going to need it, but did my best to clean it up. This is not my strong suit, guys. Um, this probably looks to you like, you know, just, just, you know, take your loss on it and get new parts. But, um, you know, this position I'm in, I'm just going to go ahead and just do my best to, you know, to paint these things and clean them up and put them back in there. So now that the parts are here, the, uh, here's the, the gasket set for all the various pieces that we'll, we'll put on here. And I'll show you that in a minute. You know, here's the, the heater core that, uh, that we're going to put in there. I wanted the long leg ones so that they, they stick through the firewall. So you don't have to, if you ever had to you know, change the heater hose. You have to take the whole heater box out of the car to get them off of this because this is on, on the other side of the firewall. And with those long leg ones, they reach through and you can just connect it on the other side of the firewall. Well, with the time I'm filming this, these are still several weeks out. Uh, and so I went ahead, just got the short one. I guess we could always upgrade down the road, but uh, yeah, I got the short one. And here's the, the plenum, the plastic plenum that I was talking about earlier. You know, this is the cardboard one that we're gonna, that we're gonna be replacing. And uh, again, this thing does the same job. It does what I need to do. Uh, this should last a lot longer than that cardboard unit. And the last two pieces of the puzzle are the, the frost vents I was talking about. So I'm gonna take the top of the dash off and put these in there and connect these heater hose, or these defrost hoses to them and we'll get it put in. So now I wanna go ahead and start getting the, the gasket set put together and get this on the various pieces. There's pieces that go here and on this side. There's a piece that goes here. Uh, there's a piece that goes around this and there's a piece on here and a piece that goes on the door. There's, so I'll show you, we got quite a few pieces to put on and what you wanna, you're want you gonna wanna use is some something like this 3M adhesive spray stuff to spray on the back of the, of the foam pieces before you apply them on here and that should hold it in place.
All right, guys. <clears throat> so the last part that I wanted to do is just go ahead and put the motor on here. And uh, there's only one way it goes, which makes it really easy for people like me. I'll put these nuts on here. All right, looking good. So here we can go ahead and attach that plenum, this plastic plenum on here, and get this ready to put back in the car. You know, while we're here, now's a good time to go ahead and put the heater hose on and get this ready. Uh, just a heads up, the, uh, the bottom hose or the bottom tube on, on the, the radiator here on the heat core actually goes to the fitting on top of the intake manifold and this top fitting goes to the water pump. So if you've got pre-cut lengths ready to go, you're gonna want the shorter one on the bottom because that's gonna have a shorter path and this is just a little bit longer, so. All right, I think this is ready. And then, uh, you know, what we want to do is, uh, I want to go ahead and get the vents, the, the defrost vents ready. So let's go in the car real quick and take the, the top of the dash off so I can drop the tubes down that we're going to connect to this plenum. So we just got to take these two screws out here. And what I'm going to use is, this is a really slick little thing. I, it's from Gear Wrench, and it just holds a bit, just a little Phillips bit inside here. And then I could put it in a ratcheting box and wrench and then I can take these screws out because you know, they don't have a lot of room between the glass and the screw. And if you have a shorty screwdriver, that might, that might work, but this is slick. So I really like this thing. I'm gonna put a description for an Amazon link in the, you know, or put a link in the description for this thing. This is pretty cool. I like these things. Now these vents are gonna just drop in here and you just go ahead and just slide the, this accordion style vent tube on there and then it'll just hold on by compression. And we can go ahead and drop these in and kind of extend this out so it'll, we can fish it down below. And the way these are held in place are just some of these little clips and they come with it. I'm going to just push them in here and push them in down inside the hole and that'll help bind the vent or this little cup piece to the dash. Now well, guys, I'm having a hard time making these work. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. They're not sticking in the hole. I do know that this piece is going to help hold it down. This may not be the best way to do it, but they're just not working out for me. So we're just going to force them to stay with the, with the grill. All right, guys, we can go ahead and start to fish this in here. If you had two people to help you, that'd be fantastic, but I don't. So we're just gonna do what we can and get this stuff in here. Uh, one thing I did forgot to, to point out was the, uh, was the big gasket that goes on the end over here that plugs up inside the dash. So don't forget to put that on. It's obvious where it goes, so you won't miss it. Once you kind of get it around in this area, you want to don't want to forget to hook up our cables that we took off when we were when we were taking everything out of the car. And the cables are, you know, they're a certain length, so they kind of only really go in one spot. I am missing the little caps that go on these arms to keep the cables from sliding off. Uh, but anyways, you're gonna want to adjust these arms and make sure that you can see, you know, the full travel of them and that it'll it'll move you know, all the way where you want. So that's where you, you position this cable and tighten this down where it gives, gives the travel that you're looking for. So now we're gonna wanna finish attaching the, these tubes, the defrost tubes to the plenum here. And then we can go ahead and continue to push this back into 
little firewall. And remember there's a there's a screw that goes up here in the corner that holds this this uh, this tab right here up inside behind the glove box. And once you get that screw tightened up there, it'll kind of hold this thing in place and we can go out into the engine bay and put the screws on the back of the motor to finish securing this. But let's, let's quick plug in the, uh, the heater control uh, wires here. Cool, I think we got everything in place. Uh, yeah, let's go into the engine bay. All right, the last little part here is just go ahead and put in these, uh, these nuts on these fasteners. Now you might find with this new rubber gasket, it's pretty thick that goes around the motor, that it doesn't allow this, the threads to stick out of the firewall as far. So you might have to push on the box inside the engine, you know, inside the, the cabinet, the cab, to get it to, to, to stick the threads out just enough so you can grab them with these nuts and pull it through. But when you tighten them down, it'll go, it'll go ahead and suck it up. Now it looks like I'm missing one. I'm gonna have to get another one of those. But uh, yeah, all right, that's in. And uh, we could plug it up here, but I'm still doing some wiring stuff in here. So I'm just gonna leave these, these dangling for now. So guys, that's how you refurbish or rebuild your heater box. Unfortunately, I won't be able to test my setup out. Uh, because I've got the car disconnected because I'm doing this motor work and stuff, I got some wiring I need to do. I'm not in a position to fire everything up and make sure that everything works. We did test the fan earlier. We do know that it works. And I'm not changing the wiring with respect to the, to the heater system. So there shouldn't be any reason why it doesn't work. But usually I like to test stuff at the end just to make sure that I didn't steer you guys in the wrong path. But I think we're gonna be okay. Again, also, um, the refurbishment of that steel inside there, inside the box, you know, Maybe you guys would be interested in buying just new internal components. Uh, I don't know if you can get them actually, uh, or if you have to buy a whole box. I was trying to salvage what I had. And again, like I mentioned before, I don't drive this car out in bad weather. Um, you know, it's, it sits most of the winter. Um, I'm probably never gonna need the heater, but it's one of those things that while we're doing this stuff, let's go ahead and kind of refresh some things and get things back to, to a happy state and, and, uh, and just take care of that stuff. So yeah, all right guys, so that's it. Uh, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you subscribe, I appreciate it because it helps my channel out. And we'll see you in the next one.